Finally, we get to the detailed syntax of the helper functions in section 7. There's no way you're going to understand all these syntax, all this syntax by watching to the end of this video only. You'll need to continue reading. But you'll see that invest.c in your notes has links to chapter or portions of the chapter that you need to read to learn more about that particular topic. So remember that we've got a variable defined earlier called investment inv, and that's of type investment. And we're also going to see variable star inv p, and that means that inv p by itself is a pointer to something of type investment. In other words, it's pointing to the first address in that memory map of all of the variables that are contained in the structure investment. So let's take a look at the helper function calculate growth. It's going to take a pointer in P to something of type investment. First thing it does is it defines a local variable only valid in this function called I. And then it goes through a for loop here. And the way the for loop works is you initialize the, the counter here, I equals one, you perform a test here, and if that test is true, you perform what's inside of the loop. And then once you exit the loop, you, you do the modification portion, which in this case adds 1 to i. OK. So for i equals 1, we start with the value i equal to 1. And our test here is to check whether i is less than or equal to the number of years that we want to track the investment. And if so, we want to perform this step. If not, if it's grown larger than that, then we should exit this loop. And the way we find out the number of years that we want to track the investment is we look at the value of years inside the structure that's pointed to by inv p. Okay? So earlier we saw that if we have the structure itself, inv, then we access its elements by using the dot, inv dot years. But since we have a pointer instead of this, the structure itself, we access using this uh, this arrow notation, a line and a greater than sign. Okay? So just a small difference. Depends whether you have a pointer to the structure or the structure itself. Either way, this accesses the years portion of the investment that was sent over. And then if it's true, if it's still one of the years we're trying to track, all you do is you fill in the element i of the array with the element i minus 1 times the growth. And that's it. So it's going to fill in all of the elements of the array with the value of the investment in that particular year. So if we continue down to get user input, it also takes a pointer to something of type inv. And hold on one second, get my face in the screen here. Um, and it also defines a local variable, an integer called valid. First thing it does is it prints our message saying, please enter the information. The next thing it does is it uses this function called scanf to read in the values that the user types in. And this percent %lf, percent %lf, percent %d means that it's looking for a long float, which is a double. It's looking for a double, a double, and an integer. It's, that's what it's expecting you to type in. Okay. Now, for it to put that data into the right place in memory, where your variable is stored, it needs to know the address of those variables. And so that's why here where you say inv p uh, arrow inv 0, what you're doing then is you're taking the address with this reference operator. Remember that the ampersand returns to us the address or a pointer to that. So we've got the address of the initial investment value, the address of the growth value, and the address of the years, number of years to track value. And the things that you type in get put into those variables. And now we're going to evaluate whether the data that you entered is valid. Okay? And the way we're going to do that is we're going to check to see if your initial investment is greater than 0. And, and this double ampersand sign means and. Remember, a single ampersand already means something. It means take the address of something. So when we say and, a logical and, a Boolean and, we have to use two ampersand signs. So we're checking to see if this value is greater than 0 and whether the growth is greater than 0. And greater than if it was less than 0, uh, I don't even know what that would mean. Negative growth is a value between 0 and 1. So uh, the growth has to be greater than 0. Uh, the number of years you're tracking has to be greater than 0. 
And the number of years you're tracking also has to be less than or equal to the maximum number of years. Okay? Now what we do is we, we take a logical and of all of those conditions, and if they're all true, it returns the value one. So anything that's true basically has a value of one. Anything that's false has a value of zero. Okay? So we take one and one and one and one, true and true and true and true. So valid is true, so valid gets a value of one. And then we print out, just to show you that valid, that valid takes the value zero or one, we print it out to the screen. And then we check to see if the input is valid or not. If it's not valid, the exclamation point means logical not. So if the input is not valid, then it's going to print invalid input exiting. Okay, so the not basically checks. If it's a one after it, then it becomes a zero. If it's a zero after it, it becomes a one. So if it's uh, invalid, it's going to print out this, this message and then return the value zero or one. Finally, the last function is to send output. This just prints to the screen. We define the local variable i and the local variable outstring, which is an array with 100 elements, and it's of type char. And now we're going to print out the results here. So we print results, and then we count from i equals, year, I equals 0 to the number of years. And i++ is C code, and all it means is i equals i plus 1. It's a shorthand that's very common. So we're going to start with i equals 0. We're going to check to see if we're less than or equal to the number of years to track. And then once we go through the loop, we're going to add 1 to the value of i. This sprintf, printf we know prints to the screen directly. sprintf is printing to a string. Okay? So this array of characters here is a string, a character string. So we're going to print what comes here inside the quotes and this variable, these variables into a string called outstring, which better not be longer than 100 because we've only allocated 100 chars for it. And once we've generated that string, now we can just print it to the screen. We could have just done printf directly, but this was just to show the use of printing to a string. This percent %s means that we're looking for a string variable or an array of characters to print properly. After that, we print a new line, and that's it. And that's our entire program, invest.c.